Weird Science is the Revolution. Vengeance of the Moon Knight number one, and it's titled Reese. We'll get to that in a second. It's written by Jed McKay, art by Alessandro Capuccio, colors by Rachel Rosenberg, letters by VCs Corey Petit. I don't normally mention covers. Is that my thing? But David Finch's cover is awesome. <laughs> it's so It's absolutely cool. fantastic. I'll give you the recap. What it says is very quick. Moon Knight gathered a group of close friends and allies to aid him in his mission, including his vampire assistant, Reese, ex-mercenary soldier, fellow Fist of Conchu, Hunter's Moon, reformed criminal, 8-Ball, and former teammate, Tigra, who is awesome. Moon Knight recently sacrificed himself to save all of Manhattan from the supervillain Black Spectre. Moon Knight's friends have pledged to carry on in his absence and run the Midnight Mission themselves. That's what this is about. That's what this first issue is about. They're going to continue the Midnight Mission. They're going to continue helping people. At the end of that last issue when Moon Knight died, you ended up having people losing their mind before reading the issue. They ended up leaking the image of Reese. Reese is there in an all-white suit. She has the necklace of the crescent, and people immediately assumed, oh, that's what's happening. They're making Reese. Oh, yeah, Moon that's Knight. right. And I think that in this issue, Jed McKay seems a little bit to be having some fun with that, like almost poking at people because you have Dr. Sturman, who is the psychologist who was helping Mark, now talking with Reese. And at one point says, so you're the new Moon Knight, huh? And she's like, what? No. And then even at one point, you end up having Hunter's Moon say, because Reese is all impressed that, oh, man. Can you teach me some of that Moon Knight stuff? And then he starts getting into it. Well, if you want the best ones, and I'll do it. And she's like, ah, never mind. So it's kind of poking the deal of, yeah, you guys thought that Reese was going to be the new Moon Knight. In this, you have Reese talking to Dr. Sturman. And it's kind of like after the fact. They had didn't have a funeral for Mark because there was no body. So they ended up having a, a shiva. And that's the whole play where Ben Grimm comes in. And it just seemed like, like, okay, which character are we going to get because of the Jewish, you know, deal? I was surprised about that, Jim. I'd forgotten about that side of him, about his character. The only, and it's cool. It seems weird, though, like when he comes in and they just end up calling him because, oh, you're the one who kept sending the Hanukkah cards I each know, year. right? Yeah, I yeah. don't know why we needed the Hanukkah card showed on the page. It kind of threw me off on that page when you see the card there. But they didn't know what to do. And who knew they were so close, right? Ben Grimm and Moon Knight. But I, I think that that's the play here. And I think it's done well. Moon Knight didn't get close to people. No. So when he ended up dying, Reese even tells this Dr. Sturman, we didn't know who to get a hold of. He would, and he, even in this run, he would tell stories of his old team and things like that. You know, Tiger is there. But really, there's not a lot of other people that are close. These are the this crew is probably the closest anybody's really been it to. I like that Moon scene where um, Ben Grimm's consoling Tigra. Great, I really like that. That's a nice little panel. Yeah, it's really nice. So when you have this going on, I think that it, a subtle way that Jed McKay does show how the character still doing character work with with Mark, even with him being dead. The idea that. He didn't have any people that he got close to him. He didn't want to get close to him because of the stuff that happens. I mean, being sure. Moon Knight is crazy. Even when Reese says, uh, you know, hey, he thought he had no friends, but people did show up. I'll tell you, it's not a huge crew that shows it's not up. A big like, gambling, you know what I mean? No. no, there are a couple of people. And look at them when they show up. This is, I know it's, you know, a funeral situation, yeah. but. Everybody kind of feels like even Cap, they didn't even bother except Tony Stark to even change their outfits. They came as, you know, they're coming as Captain America and he's there with his arms crossed. I think they're there out of respect, not out of love or friendship. No, no one looks very happy to be there, though, do they, Jim, as you were saying? No, Again, no. it is a funeral, so I don't course, expect yeah, them to come yeah. in laughing. But <laughs> I think that they're there. They're, they're going to be some of these heroes that when they do end up dying, yeah. you're gonna, because you're a hero, you go to pay respect to them. But it's not like they're, they were your best friends. And really, Cap. Tony, some of these characters, the last time they dealt with Moon Knight was when he ended up in that Age of Conchu stuff that Jason Aaron read or wrote. Right. He took all their powers and pretty much imprisoned them. So it's not like he was the on the greatest of terms at this point anyway. But 
I like that they come and pay their respects. It's nice. And the one that stands out for me, Jim, is the um, the one with the eight ball head, which is a new character to me. Yeah, really cool. He's fun. And th- that shows that side of Mark, and they'll get into it, where he has allowed eight ball to be a good guy. And this is yeah. what eight ball wanted kind of leads to the big you have a redemption ending. arc sounds good. yeah yeah so it, it, he is the a guy who wants to do better it is funny though seeing an eight ball with with a suit on and so that again <laughs> if i'm is. there and if you do look at tony i can almost squint and think that he's chuckling at eight ball he looks like he's looking at eight ball like <laughs> he you do jerk I do like then when the heroes go off and they're going to protect the neighborhood, they're going to go and get what the Midnight Mission was going to do for that seven days while they're doing the Shiva. So you end up having them in cats there in the front. That's kind of cool. But then the whole play of what they're going to do going forward, they're going to run the Midnight Mission because that's what Mark wanted. But each of them has their own kind of deal. Reese thinks, well, we don't have to worry. Mark's going to come back. I mean, that's what happens with Moon Knight. He's died a bunch of times. So come back. The problem is, one, Hunter's Moon did come back. They even mentioned the structure arc from before. When he came back, he came back a little wrong. Then you also have the point where Khonshu is in prison in Asgard. Okay, here's the mission. We're going to go forward with it. And what you do is you get Mr. Sulk and Mr. Smile as the big threat, like just to show that they have done their deal. and. Almost the idea of Mr. Sulk, Mr. Smile, they're like, oh, man, Moon Knight's done. Like, let's get out of this dungeon dimension and do some stuff. These are Mark Wade characters, by the way, from this Doctor Strange oh, Okay, run. I didn't know that. Thanks for filling me okay. in on that. I mean, they look like that, like, almost like a old-timey steampunky deal. They do. They remind me of almost Sandman characters, that kind of thing. When they come out, y- you see that if, if Mark was there... You know, he'd probably just be able to take care of them easily. But Soldier and Reese, they're not Moon Knight and they're having problems. Soldier, pretty much what he does is shoot things. And he's shooting them with a shotgun. He's like, this is not working. Reese is kind of trying to do a little vampire stuff. That's not going to work. These demons are bulletproof, aren't they, Jim? Yeah, sure. and they, they're just laughing at them. And again, it's it's kind of the way to show the badass deal and... It is kind of funny because at this point you're sitting there, oh, Reese, Reese is the, you know, going to be Moon Knight, but she's not. Then you forget like, oh, yeah, Hunter's Moon is the other fist. Like, all right, he can still do his stuff. And he comes out and pretty much just banishes Mr. Sulk and Mr. Smile back into the dungeon dimension. Great so scene. Well, great full page there. Look at that. Oh, yeah. When he comes in, it's so cool. When he And he, he's doing his deal. So the whole play is how are everybody taking the fact that mark is dead tigress taking it the worst she is going and knocking heads she's trying to you know punch people you know down to get the info where is this dark specter she's the black furious, specter. isn't she one scene here jim she's really angry like she screamed for the black specter where is the black specter yeah, so she wants to get revenge and again reese is there and her whole play is he's gonna come back you have soldier who just a soldier he's just gonna shoot things and whatnot Hunter's Moon, he's just kind of like, okay, I'm just going to keep doing my thing, but I'm not really. Yeah. So Tiger, though, is the one who wants revenge. And you see it. And I mean, this is like one of the most feral, crazy, you know, versions that I've seen of Tiger in this book. She's been a little more relaxed than, than this because when she she's just covered in blood and full out fangs and just telling this guy, I'm going to kill you. I, you know, you better tell me. You have the scent of this black specter. I know you work for him. Where is he? The guy's like, I don't know. Nobody knows. I I have no idea. If Reese didn't show up, I think she kills him. I think that she just straight up kills him. And this is a hero. And she's so upset. So when Reese shows up uh, and tries to calm her down, they kind of butt heads. And I was expecting them to start making out. I, I really, I'm like, this is a weird scene, isn't it, Jim? Yeah, we talked about this before we start recording. It's like they look like they're, gonna, they're about to kiss, but they're not. They're kind of squaring up, butting heads. Reese is trying to calm down. Yeah, Tigra, she while is. Tigra is trying to say, "Why are you trying to like almost like how dare you try to calm me down? You should be as mad as me. Like, yeah. why aren't you? Do- I'm the only one out there trying to get revenge. I'm the one." And it's true. I don't when, feel anything. Yeah, and when Reese says, "This isn't what Mark would want." This isn't what, and I say Mark, I mean all the personalities, they even bring it in, Moon Knight. And she, this isn't what he would want. He wanted us to continue the Midnight Mission. He wanted us to help people. He was about helping people, you know, not this. 
and she realizes. I do think maybe they'd start making now. Again, I was just going to make the joke that she's not going to make out with Tigra because there's blood all over her face, but she is a vampire. So I, I, I'm surprised she's she resisting just lick it, the right? temptation, isn't she, there, Jay? For sure, she has to be. It's a weird thing of the art where it's like it the weird. panel, then it gets a little closer, <laughs> it gets a little closer. I'm like, it's a little hot, a little steamy. Yeah, I'm like, holy moly! I mean, I like how with with Reese talking, she hasn't really talked too much about her feelings yet. Right. She really is concerned. With others, but then says, you know, I don't know. Th- this line's a little of a. I cried so much, I I wet blood. I'm like, in the vampire. I didn't know thing. she cared so much. Like- but Jim, the one that the thing that got me here that surprised me is like, so I don't know that much of the history. She says, Reese says, like this is the fourth time Mark Spector has died. He dies a lot, and he keeps coming back. Yeah, because he's the. And she even mentions like he has two gods, and you know, he's not in good terms with either. But they do mention that wink, wink of maybe we have to break Conchu out of. Prison? Right, yes. We'll have to see. Uh, it's funny because Kanchu in prison is just such an odd concept. But even so, he's still kind of like, even when he's not manipulating things, he is because how Mark was so concerned and he didn't like this and whatever. But it's just a crazy play. But all that going on, you then go to 8-Ball. And how is 8-Ball getting along? 8-Ball, and they even say, and 8-Ball, just the guy with an 8-Ball head is just such a kind of like a cool wacky concept that you're gonna be drawn to him as that goofy it's a very like, visual mascot. concept isn't it great visual character yeah dr sterman goes oh i forgot about eight ball and it's a good line where she says most people do everybody does i always forget about it yeah poor eight ball i feel bad for eight ball jim he's getting chased and you see it i don't know why it didn't hit with me right away when he's running and you see the the moon and they but he's being chased by Moon Knight. That's a great image again. Yeah, look at that. He's supposed to meet them at the Midnight Mission. All of a sudden, he just gets thrown through the window. His eight ball mask, if you're going to show eight ball really down and out, it's his eight ball helmet got smashed. He's being chased. And he's like, I can't believe it. It doesn't seem it can't be him, right? And then they're talking. It goes back with Reese and Dr. Sturman, but says, yeah, I think that Mark might have come back because the whole play is Mm. that Dr. Sturman's like, oh, you're afraid he won't come back. And she's like, no, I'm afraid he has come back and he's come back wrong. And you see that last page again from that cover. And you see this. So the big play there with that cliffhanger page, because he says, I'm Moon Knight. Get out of my house. Is this Mark? Is this another personality? Is it something new? Is this a new fistica? How dark as you look on that page, doesn't it, Jim? The, the weird uniform there, the weird costume, it's kind of reversed. It's like it's, a, a mirror It's like the version. negative image. Of, yeah, exactly. It's really cool, right? So, yeah. And it's well played by Jeb McKay. If you're going to have this new Moon Knight come and beat somebody up, beat up 8-Ball because 8-Ball's just 8-Ball. And so it, it that feels like it's <laughs> not even just like that isn't something that a Moon Knight would do anyway. But he's beating up on helpless eight ball here. Like, this is sadistic. Poor eight ball. Everyone forgets about him. You, you basically cracked his helmet, his only thing, and then really, you know, went after him. And it's crazy. But we'll have to see if this is, you know, another, like I said, personality that's come back. And, and the others have gone off. They're, they're recessed or whatnot. And this Moon Knight thinks, what the hell are you guys? You guys aren't my friends. I don't know. You mm. get out of the midnight mission. So. Well, at the CI, but what would you give this? Well, I enjoyed it. I've got, I've gone through this twice now, and I think the second time I've enjoyed it even more. So I'm going to give this quite quite a high score. Yeah, it might surprise you. This is an eight out of ten for me. I'm going to give it an eight as well. Hey, all you weirdos! If you like comic book shows, podcast videos, please check the description of this video where you can see links to all of our podcast shows, websites, all of that. And if you want to help us out for everything that we do. You can click on that Patreon link in the upper left-hand corner and check out our Patreon where you can go right now and get a seven-day free trial to see all the stuff that we do, shows that are Marvel, DC, indie, manga, and even more. So check all that out, and I'll talk to you all later. Weird Science is the revolution.